Good morning. Welcome back to my channel. It's an Amber thing. I'm Amber. So I've had some time today and I was on YouTube and I have been surfing all around and just kind of looking at some different things and I've run into some really good, some really good channels and I wanted to share. So like I said before, when somebody comments on my um, videos or when I get a new subscriber, I really try and, you know, click on it, see what kind of content they have. Um, I'm, I'm assuming in a lot of cases, you know, that the people who are commenting and subscribing to my channel are probably within the extra of witness community and, you know, have something to say as well. So... Um, today I was looking at Dude State Project. So he does, um, cart crashing. And, um, I have really enjoyed some of the videos that I've watched today. He isn't like, um, abrasive or intrusive so much as he, you know, kind of goes up and subtly talks to the witnesses who um, are, you know, doing carts and, you know, kind of sparks up conversation. I kind of like the way that he does it because I kind of feel like, you know, he is enabling them to have some critical thinking about some of the things that he says. He's not outright coming out, not in the videos I've seen anyways, he's not coming out and, and bashing them or, you know, uh, putting them in a state of where they shut down. So he actually gets to leave some, some treasure with them, you know, food for thought, some things that maybe will stick with them and wake them up eventually. And I really, really like that. So if you haven't yet, take a look at this channel. I really like it. Um, I've subscribed to it. It's called Dude State Project. Um, and I just, he's funny and, um, you know, he captivated me as an audience, and so I wanted to share. Another one that I looked at today was Ex Jehovah's Witness Filth. And there is a video that I watched. It was it was a lengthy video, but it was a great video, and it was called Interview with a Former Watchtower Writer um, and Researcher. And the, the person that he interviewed was named Ben, and he was an elder, and he really, you know, was able to kind of break some things down, talk about some things that uh, I found to be very interesting, and, you know, kind of just confirm some of the things that, that you know, I've been through or experienced. And he mentions a word that I absolutely love and I hadn't thought of um, with regards to describing some of the practices of the witnesses and the word is I'm trying to get this piece of hair back here gaslighting and that is such a real word with regards to this organization so when when gaslighting is taking place um, basically what's happening is whatever it is that you're feeling or thinking or going through you're made to feel like you are the problem and you're crazy basically for thinking or feeling the way that you feel. And I just, that was such a perfect word for some of the things that I've experienced and I'm sure a lot of you have experienced. So I really appreciated hearing him say that because it kind of like sheds, it just adds a layer, you know, to uh, to what's happening there. And, and is a very, it's a very good word. It's a very good term to use for some of the things that take place there. Gaslighting, yes, they do this and it's terrible. It's a terrible practice. It really, it, it's part of that psychological war warfare that is um, played against us in all of this. So then the third, the third channel that I came across that I really, really thoroughly enjoyed and I kinda wanna talk a little bit more about this one um, Although I enjoyed all of them, but this one kind of sparked something in me and it made me remember something that I want to share. But um, it's the, the channel's called I'm Worldly. And um, this is also a cart crashing channel. I didn't view.
view all the videos. I didn't. I, I viewed this one, and it and it sparked a little memory in me, and it was something that I wanted to share. But I also want you to, if you haven't already, to go to this channel and take a look at what being done here. What is being done here? Um, a while back, ex Jehovah's Witness had asked me. I'm sorry. I'm just. I'm. I'm paying attention <laughs> to my hair more than anything, but. Um, Um, I was asked by ex Jehovah's Witness, you know, if I would ever participate in these Kingdom Hall crashes, the cart crashing, things like that. And my answer to that was, was no. Um, but I really, really appreciate the fact that the answer isn't no for everybody. Because I, I love what, what this person did. And so he goes up to a cart and he, um, you know, starts talking to the witnesses a little bit. And he he brings up the child molestation stuff. But he, he does it in an indirect way in the beginning. So he starts off and he's like, you know, what do you think about these Catholic, these Catholics who are harming children, basically. I'm, I, I don't remember the words verbatim. But, you know, he's talking about, he's talking to them and asking them, you know, what is, what, how do they feel about this or, or, you know, what's their take on it being that they're also religious people. Um, and he gets a brother, you know, starting to talk and the brother, you know, is telling him that, uh, you know, the witnesses have a practice for how they take care of the situation with regards to, um, child, my son's back here and I'm looking and he's brought in and washed and, Empty. Smell? Yuck. Smell? <laughs> yes, my love. That's... Mm. I'm kidding. Anyways, uh, whatever makes you happy, my love. Whatever makes you happy. Can I keep them inside forever? Um, if they're washed, I guess you can. Okay. Um, so... So he starts talking about this, and, um... And then he does something very brave. And pretty awesome. So he stands there and he's, you know, in front of the cart and he makes a public statement and he just, you know, is like, everybody, everybody, you know, I want you to be aware of and beware that the witnesses protect child molesters within their organization. And it really is so true I know, and this is a subject that has really been on my mind quite a bit lately. And I and I really think it has a lot to do with just a, it's very sad for one that, the, that children are having to go through these things and that they're not, my son's in the background waving, um, that these children are coming forward and not being taken seriously and that things are being covered up. And I really don't think that they're being covered up as much to port, to protect the person who is the child predator as much as it is to protect or save face for the branding of this organization. Because if these things come out in the numbers that they're actually taking place, it is very bad press for the organization. And as much money as they're making, they really don't want to, you know, have bad press like that. It's gonna really affect the numbers of people who are attending. Um, you know, and the people who are coming into the organization from here forward, you know, people aren't going to trust it as much. However, I really appreciated, you know, the way that this was handled and it reminded me of something and it's a, what it reminded me of something a little bit separate than, you know, the organization, but just how I handled something as a human being 
not having anything to do with the witnesses, but how very, very, well, let me just tell the story. So when we had first moved to Clovis from the Los Angeles area, um, I had my oldest daughter, Carissa, who was five, no, six at the time. I had my daughter, Kayla, who was, I want to say she was like a year old. Um, and then I was pregnant with my son, Anthony. And we lived in an apartment complex. In the apartment complex, there, there were like four plexes. So there were, you know, one door facing another door. And it, you know, we, it was a fourplex. So directly diagonal from me, there was um, a, a couple who lived there. And she, the, the woman had made a special point to come over and to welcome us when we had moved in. And I thought, oh, how sweet, you know, that's so nice. Um, and I'd gone over to her home one day because I was trying to cook something and I had run out of milk. And so I ran over and I was like, hey, you know, do you have a cup of milk I could borrow? Well, when I, when she opened the door, I was holding my daughter, Kayla, who was, you know, very young at the age. I mean, at the time, you know, about a year old, maybe a little less. And, um. She's like, oh, yeah, you know, come on in, come on in. And the funny thing about it is, you know, I, I've said this before, and you all know, um, I am psychic. I'm very psychic. And um, I didn't realize it at the time, but I was receiving a, a message. And this is what I saw in my head was I had gone up to the door. She opened it, and I got a flash of a, of a, of a stop sign, like a red stop sign. And then I and then I got a message about child molestation, child molester. It, it there was literally like it was like a neon sign in my head flashing child molester, child molester, child molester, child molester. And I'm like thinking to myself, oh my god, what is going on? Like, what what's happening in my head right now? You know, so you push those things out, you know, those intuitions, you, you push them out sometimes, as I did at this time. I didn't know, you know. Well, I guess I knew, but I wasn't paying attention. I went home. Well, well, let me just, let me further. So the girl invites me in and she's like, why don't you let, you know, and she pointed to her husband. His name was Claude. Why don't you let Claude hold Kayla while you come in and get some milk? And I said, no, of course, because I'm not going to let another man that I don't even know hold my baby girl. That's just, mm -mm, I don't do that. Anyways, so I went home, and because I had had this neon flashing sign in my head saying child molester, child molester, I looked on Megan's Law. And sure shit, he was on there. And I became very, very angry. I was so angry because this woman asked me to put, put my baby girl into this man's hands, and I just was enraged. So I called the apartment complex... Um, manager and I was asking did you know this how could you put me in this fourplex right here knowing that this is a child molester with my children right here and then you know I I became when that didn't I had asked for them to move my apartment because I was really frightened you know I was upset and I was frightened for my children and um oh I'm trying to close the door um, you know, she refused to move me unless I paid and I was like, F you, I'm not going to pay. You're going to move me. So I just went ahead and got on my, you know, I, I, on my high horse, <laughs> which I felt like I was, you know, I, I was upset. That was probably the wrong word. But, um, I printed up flyers that had his picture from the Megan's Law, uh, website and I put them all over the complex. And needless to say, they moved right away which mission accomplished. But I remembered this when I was watching that cart crash and I was, I was just a, like, I could relate. I could relate. And at this point now, today, for the first time, I'm like, wow, that was amazing. That, see, now these are the kinds of things, these are the kinds of acts of love that I speak of when I talk about and I hate to say it, I'm not going to say the word 
that starts with an A because it's that's a demonized word. But these ex Jehovah's Witnesses who care enough about humankind to warn others. And for that, I wish I did. <laughs> and maybe one day I will. I don't know. But I wish I had the courage to do what you did. Bravo. I'm worldly. Bravo. Bravo. Hats off to you. I... I really enjoyed watching that video. It gave me a sense of satisfaction that somebody out there is sticking up for these children. I hope you all go to I Am Worldly's channel, you subscribe, and you watch what he's doing because it's amazing. All of these people, all, all of these, the people that I mentioned today, um, hats off. I think you're all amazing. Um, we're doing, we're doing a wonderful work, honestly. You know, there are... How do I say it? It takes a lot of love um, to do the things that are being done. And I can't even say that I'm a part of this really because I don't have the courage to do some of the things that you guys are doing. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you for doing these things because people deserve to know. People deserve to know. That's all I have to say for today. Or for right now, anyways. I may come back with something later. I don't know. I've got a free day again today. So you may see me a couple times. However, for this video, I'm going to end it so it actually uploads. Because we're going on like 17 minutes. And it may not. Uh, and then I'll be sad. But subscribe if you haven't already. Share with someone who can benefit. Hit that bell so you know when I make new videos. I'll talk to you all again soon. Bye.